Hey everybody, what's up? This is Darnock with TGN.TV bringing you a quick Minecraft video for the day. This is my first Minecraft video. You guys probably have not heard of me as I really only post regularly on the StarCraft 2 channel. So, yep, I'm Darnock. I should start showing up on this channel more and more frequently if all goes well. We'll just have to see. So, the first video that I am going to do for Minecraft is going to be a quick tree farm video. And basically, this is a tree farm over here. I have a nice glass wall so I can just peer in and see how it's looking from time to time because I'm curious like that. You don't need to do that, but I do like it. And here's a closer look. Here it is. It's basically just a bunch of saplings and a bunch of torches. And as you can see, we actually have already had a couple trees grow. I actually just tore this entire thing down and replanted it, and we're already having some growth. So that is pretty good. And the reason you might want a tree farm is because wood's always useful for sticks, for torches, and tools, and stuff like that. And it's just nice to have a steady supply of wood and lumber near your house without having to go and trek around the world and try to track down trees like that. It's nice to have it all in one location. The cool thing about this tree farm is it can be built outside or underground or in only a partially covered area such as we have here. There's lots and lots of flexibility of where you want to put it. It is all up to you and what you feel like doing. The cool thing about this tree farm as well is it can be pretty much repeated indefinitely in general, depending on just how the random number generator treats you. When you go through and completely clear out all the trees in your tree farm, you should usually get enough saplings to be able to replant the entire thing without having to go out and find a few more. Occasionally you will get a little bit shortchanged, but that's not the end of the world. It's usually only by five or six. So you can just go get two or three trees from the outside world and uh, you will be pretty good from there. So first we're going to talk about the dimensions of the room. The dimensions of this particular room are 9, so from there to here is 9 blocks, by 11, which is the length over there, and Lindsay Kim left the game, sad day, and by 8, which is the height. Yes, okay, sorry, I was a second guessing myself for a second, but yes, that is in fact 8 blocks. The dimensions on the ground aren't too terribly uh, important. You might have to do a little bit more thinking and calculating if you decide to go for your own dimensions rather than copy mine. You actually don't need it to be 9 by 13. It can be 7 by 11. However, I like to have this external walkway over here, so I actually have mine as 9 by 13 because it can be difficult to try navigate through this center area when it's completely uh, covered by trees. That can get a little bit difficult. So this is an 80% efficient tree farm. That means that 80% of all of the tiles that are here are saplings, and there's a tree just popping out right there. They are saplings as opposed to just the um, stone over here or the cobblestone with torches on it. So you get a very, very nice return for your hard work. And then that, that's really it. I'll have the diagram for how to position everything over here. You'll see that all my torches are on cobblestone rather than normal stone. And I actually just realized I have my texture pack loaded. So things are going to be looking a little bit different. This is the pie hole texture pack for anybody who is interested. But as I was saying, I have my torches on the cobblestone. That's not necessary. I just have it like that. So if me or somebody else messes up while we're chopping down trees and we accidentally hit a torch, it's very clear where to replace it. Now there is a couple more things I do want to touch on. First of all, like I said, the width and length aren't hugely important. The height is pretty important though. You want to have it capped at eight blocks. You don't want to let it go higher than that. Because if you have it capped at 8 blocks, that means you will get 6 blocks of wood and then 2 blocks of branches up at the top. The reason you only want to have 6 blocks of wood, and sometimes it will actually be a little less, I think this one is 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, this actually only has 5 blocks of wood, but that's okay. You don't want to have it more than 6 blocks of wood. If you have it more than 6 blocks of wood, you will not be able to chop the entire tree down from ground level and you'll have to start doing some sort of shenanigans with building stones under you and hopping up and jumping onto the top of the tree and it can just get a little bit annoying. So you want to make sure you have it capped at eight blocks so you can mine the entire thing from the ground level. There is one more thing I need to touch on, actually two, I lied. The reason we can get away with building this tree farm underground or in poorly lit areas such as this is the torches. Trees do need light to grow, however in Minecraft it does not matter whether that is natural light or light provided by torches. So as long as you make sure that every tree has one torch that is directly adjacent to it, not diagonal, but directly next to it, you will be fine. And as you can see, we can pick any random sapling. We're just going to wave our camera around and you, I pick you. You see it is right next to a torch. 
This sapling is right next to a torch. This sapling is right next to a torch. They're all right next to torches, and that is how we are able to get them to grow. One final thing I want to point out before nightfall falls too, too quickly, and um, some creepers start getting out here. As you can see, I do have a nice glass wall over here. This is not necessary at all. You can just have it be open. You can have it be just a stone wall, and they just come in through your door. It does not matter. I like having the glass wall just because then when I just pop out of my house, I can look over and be like, oh, it's time to harvest my tree farm again. So that's pretty convenient. However, the thing about glass is leaves will actually grow through the glass, funnily enough. I'm assuming that's a glitch that will be eventually worked out. However, I'm sure Notch has a lot more high-priority issues he needs to iron out. But that is something you have to be aware of the glass, and it will not actually break the glass. It will just try to occupy the space that the glass is in, and then the glass will push it out on to the outside of your tree farm. So sometimes I have like random branches just stuck to the glass on the outside, which is kind of strange. And I actually just chopped down one of my saplings by accident, so let's replace that. But that's not the end of the world. Again, the glass does not get broken. It's still there. just hangs out, does its thing. And I think that's pretty much it. So thank you guys for watching. Hopefully you will be able to make a nice, beautiful tree farm of your own. Again, I guess the schematic you could call it. I will put in the description of this video so you can easily just take a look at that and copy my design if you like. And I say it's my design. I actually did not invent this. Uh, this is actually from the Minecraft wiki is where I got this design. And I thought I would make a little video showcasing it. And we forgot to put a sapling there. So there we go. Brilliant complete tree farm, 80% efficient, pretty sweet. See you guys later.